So what we'll do today is we will go through the Wikipedia page of Cap Theorem uh, to understand some key aspects of it. We'll try to make it, we'll try to keep it as practical as possible. But there are, and I would try to point out examples at every single step, right? Just like how we did with uh, SQL versus NoSQL space and other spaces, right? So that's one. <coughs> Apart from this, uh, we'll also go through uh, uh, the blog that was published back in 2017 by Google when they introduced Spanner database. So we'll also go through this other blog to understand what they do, how they do, uh, and you know, make sense out of it. So those are the two key agendas that we'll go through today. And I made a boo boo where I shared this. Okay, that's fine. We'll, I'll, I'll, I'll sort it out at the end. Sure, that's fine. Okay, superb. So let's start with uh, the Wikipedia page uh, of Cap Theorem. And so to understand what Cap Theorem says, it says in in basically theoretical computer science, the Cap Theorem, also named as Brewer's Theorem. Surprisingly, uh, the blog about Google Cloud Spanner uh, and the Cap Theorem, the one that we'll be covering today uh, as well, is actually by Eric Brewer himself, who, who actually uh, stated the Cap Theorem for the first time, right? So we are actually talking about his contribution itself, right? So, <clears throat> Uh, also named as Brewer's Theorem after computer scientist Eric Brewer states that any distributed data store can provide only two of the following three guarantees. Now, two of the following three guarantees typically implies a trilemma like we have a dilemma either A or B. Trilemma is out of this three, we can pick a subset of it. Right? And it's a difficult choice to make and which is holds true for Cap Theorem. Right? Now, before we understand Cap Theorem, we need to understand what CAP is. There are very interesting insights, something that we also spoke about during SQL, no SQL space uh, holds true over here as well. So C stands for consistency. See what Wikipedia says about consistency that every read receives the most recent write or an error. Now this is very different. I, I have been saying this for a very long time that the consistency in ACID is very different from consistency in CAP theorem because consistency in CAP theorem implies that Every read receives the most recent write or an error. While consistency in ACID is about that your database goes from one consistent state to another consistent state using constraints and whatnot. Right? So this is where the first thing we need to understand what this consistency is all about. This consistency is all about that whatever value was last was last written is exactly what I'm getting. Right? That's consistency of like in the in the cap theorem, the, the consistency C stands for this. Second is availability that every request receives a non error response without the guarantee that it contains the most recent write. It takes time to absorb this, right? So every request receives a non error response, like every request, non error, basically let it be non error. So every request receives a response without the guarantee that it contains most recent write. So here it excluded the, 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 the criteria for consistency, which was it receives the most recent write. Here we say that it receives some response, some non-error response. It does not mean it has to be the most recent write, right? So the availability, the definition of availability excluded the most recent write constraint. It says whatever is the response, just send it to me, right? And that's typically what availability means that, hey, whatever I have, I'll send it to you. I'm not sure if it's going to be the most recent one or not, but I'll send whatever I have. And that's what the definition of availability is. And the third one is partition tolerance. The system continues to operate despite an arbitrary number of messages being dropped by the network between nodes. Basically, this partition tolerance implies that in case of a network, in case there is a, a partition, which means either a breakage or a network, or a software glitch or anything that creates a virtual separation or a virtual split between the network that you have. That hey, a subset of nodes is part of one sub network while subset of node is part of other sub network and they are not able to talk to each other. So you have a completely disjoint subset of networks. That is partition. 
And partition tolerance implies that you are tolerant to that network being partitioned. Right? So C stands for consistency, where it's about you, re you receiving the most recent, right? It's different from C in ACID, consistent database with constraints, that's different. Availability is about just receiving any response, any non-error response. And it does not say anything about uh, you getting the most recent, right? It says you could get anything. Third is about partition tolerance, right? Now, given that we have established the definition, now let's start going through the magic. Now here, <coughs> it's a very common thing that CAC theorem states you can pick two out of this three. But look what it's written, something very beautiful. When a network partition failure happens, it must be decided whether to do one of the following. So it does not say that two out of this three, right? What it states, it states that in case of a network partition failure, which means in case there is a logical split between network, right? Where the two subsets of network are unable to talk to each other, you have to pick one out of these two. What are these two options? First is you cancel the operation and thus decrease the availability, but to ensure consistency. So you lose availability, but ensure consistency of data that no matter what, your data remains consistent. Now here the consistency is what? That you would always receive the most recent, right? So in case of a network partition, you are still ensuring quote unquote strong consistency. Basically you are taking a downtime. You are decreasing availability, which means you are taking a downtime. So this statement effectively means because you are taking a trade off on availability, what you are effectively doing is you are effectively you are effectively just uh, taking a downtime to ensure that your things is basically consistent, right? That's what it uh, basically that's what it boils down to. What we are doing is we proceed with the operation and thus provide availability, but at a risk of uh, but at a risk of inconsistency. That it is possible that your data becomes inconsistent. Basically, you will, you are, it is possible that you would not receive the most recent right, which means that's what the definition of availability was that it returns response, a non error response, right? That you are running a risk of your system being available. It would return something whenever you make a call, it would return something, but at a risk of your data become like your date, right? So it's not inconsistent, inconsistent, but it's more about you are definitely not receiving the most recent right because. Like think about it, you have a network and it broke into two half, right? Now what would happen is let's say your read request went to one part of it, like one half of it, right? While the writes went to the other half. Now what would happen is if the read is going to the first half, well, write is going to the second half, what would this mean? This means that when you are reading, you're definitely getting, oh sorry, you are definitely not getting the most recent write. That's what it means. It's that simple, right? So either you take the complete downtime. So you are giving up on availability, right? To ensure consistency that no matter what, whenever the read happens, the read would always be the most recent, right? You'd say, but you are taking a hit on availability. You're taking a downtime. That's true because you are giving up on availability over here, right? In case of a network. So basically in case of a network partition, you are giving up on availability, which means you are taking a downtime to ensure that whenever your read returns a success, it is always going to be the most recent read that you are getting. And in case of, or otherwise you are picking, uh, you proceed with the operation and you get availability, which means your reads are going to one half of the partition while from the other half, you are not, while uh, the other half is accepting the right request. So you are running a risk that your system is available but you are not definitely not getting the most recent right, right? That's what it boils down to, right? Okay, superb. So what else? Thus, if there is a network partition, one has to choose between consistency or availability. Know that consistency as defined in the CAP theorem is quite different. No distributed system is safe from network failures. Thus network partitioning is generally has to be tolerated. Now this statement holds true, no doubt, but Think about it. Uh, when does this statement holds true? When there is a wide network, right? So if let's say you are looking to just do it 
on a very small network, a local network, the chances of your network partitioning happening is very limited. At an internet scale, where let's say one database is connected in one end of the world while other database is connected in other end of the world, it is very much possible, right? But in case of a small network, a small data center, it is highly unlikely that your network would partition. Right? This is one very important insight that a lot of modern databases have adopted that if you ensure or if you go with a very high quality hardware, you can almost reduce the risk of your network getting partitioned. Which means that if this doesn't hold true, your system becomes both available and consistent. Right? So CA system, you would have heard of it. Right? Okay. So in presence of partition, one is left with two options, consistency or availability. When choosing consistency or availability, the system will return an error or a timeout if particular information cannot be guaranteed to be up to date due to network partitioning. When choosing availability over consistency, which means you're choosing availability, which means uptime, the system will always process the query and try to return the most recent available version of information. Even if it cannot guarantee it is up to date due to network partitioning. Okay. That's what it is. So either you take the downtime or you do this. Right? Read this. This is one line that, you know, basically decimates a lot of stuff. Right? It just it literally decimates a lot of videos that are available. In absence of a partition, which means there is no network partition, both availability and consistency can be satisfied. And this is a very solid statement because a lot of people, the way they think about asset is they think it's uh, uh, two out of three. You can pick any two. In most cases, it is true. But if you think practically, that's not going to be the case, which means that you can build a system which is highly available and highly consistent when you are assuming that your network cannot partition. And this is where Google Spanner comes in. So if you Google about this, that, hey, does Google Spanner broke cap theorem? Because it was a very famous statement being thrown that uh, Google Spanner solves cap theorem or, or uh, uh, it, it basically guarantees all three. It, it guarantees consistency and availability and partition tolerance. So what exactly are they doing there? So here are a few things. This blog is also written by Eric Brewer, who is VP Infra and a Google fellow, the person who, bring, who, who brought uh, cap theorem to life, right? So read this. This blog was published February 15, 2017, long back when they introduced Spanner. But it holds, and basically today I'm at a stage that I can understand this, right? But it's it's very beautifully written, right? And read where if you if you do a Google search or a Bard search or a ChatGPT search, and you search that does Google Spanner break Cap Theorem or which database breaks Cap Theorem, you would always see this option that hey Google Spanner gives you all three, right? So let's see what they actually mean when they say that they give you all three. Building systems that manage globally distributed data provides data consistency and are also highly available. So look here, they started with this statement that that manages globally distributed data provides data consistency and are also highly available. It, and when you do this, it's really hard. When, when you have globally distributed data, right? The beauty of the cloud is that someone else can build that for you. The cap theorem states ta 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 ta. This leads to three kinds of systems, CA, CP, AP, based on what letter you leave out. Designers are not entitled, perfectly fine. Now, this is where things start to become interesting. For distributed systems, over a wide area, it is generally viewed that partitions are inevitable over a wide area. And this is one of the most important words of this blog. Over a wide area. Which means that if you are not operating out of wide area, if you are not building a globally distributed database, if you are not going across continent, you do not, you are not operating in a wide area, right? So if you are operating in a local data center, the chances of partitioning of network is almost zero. And you can assume that it would almost never happen. 
so you can build a system that is both consistent and available right okay so it is generally viewed that partitions are inevitable uh, inevitable although not necessarily common they also mentioned not necessarily common if you believe that partitions are inevitable inevitable any distributed system must be prepared to forfeit either consistency or availability that's exactly what cap theorem states right in case of a partition you either go ap or cp uh, which is not a choice anyone wants to make so what happened behind the scene is they got rid of partition tolerance altogether they say let's assume that we would never ever ever have a partition tolerance if we guarantee that that by making our hardware really sturdy really solid right can we build a system that is distributed basically it's consistent and available a distributed data store that is consistent and available that's exactly what the foundation of spanner is right in fact the original point of cap theorem was to get designers to to take this trade off seriously but there are two important caveats first you only need to forfeit consistency or availability during an actual partition even when there are many mitigations second the actual theorem is about read this the sec the actual theorem is about 100% availability a more interesting discussion about the trade offs involved achieve high achieve realistically high availability is obviously like 100% available it is assumed like when you say that it's consistency or availability or partitioning you can very clearly see that it is so difficult to build a 100% available system every system has downtime software have fatigue every system has downtime right so it's really difficult to build 100% available system which means you have a lot of leeway if you are building a globally distributed database you have a lot of leeway at hand because although you are governed by the cap theorem you are having a lot of leeway that given that you would obviously not have 100% availability you would not have you would not have partitioning if you are operating in a small data center so you can very easily ensure very high consistency and that's what happens so here if i take a detour a small detour and not talk about distributed database right if i just take a simple uh, mysql single standalone mysql database right and i think it's also mentioned in the blog uh, somewhere down also right but let me still talk about it that if we talk about a single database normal mysql instance that you have there it is a single instance so definitely partition is never going to happen it's a single node even if get that gets cut off that gets cut off right so that is never going to happen so uh, p is gone right which means that never partition going to happen which means your database can be highly available and consistent right but because it is single node if it goes down everything goes down so it would not have what it would never have availability 100% availability because if it goes down your database is gone right so what you get is you get very high consistency and you see it satisfies both you when you write when you read you would always get a most recent right because it is single data node on which your request goes and you get the response and you get a consistency of acid also that your data moves from one consistent state to another consistent state right so now let's talk about spanner so today google is releasing cloud spanner for use of gcp customers spanner is google highly available global sql database sql database it manages replicated data at a great scale both in terms of size of data and volume of transaction by the way it beats it is 25x more than what ddb handled they recently published a blog about it read it if you are interested right the amount of load spanner handled is nothing that ddb handles 25x more than that right and that too almost breaking quote on quote breaking the gap theorem now here interesting caveats it assigns globally consistent real time timestamp to every datum like single data point returned to it and clients can do globally consistent reads across the entire database without locking now this one statement covers so many so many things it's very tough state tough words globally consistent real time timestamps to every data returned to it and clients can do globally consistent reads across the entire so this is where google's proprietary hardware comes at play right the way they do this it's called as true time you can read about it true time algorithm the way they assign this 
and it is really very specialized hardware very specialized hardware and because of which they are able to quote unquote break the cap theory and i would always say quote unquote break the cap theory okay. now here two things in terms of cap spanner claims to be both consistent and highly available despite operating over a wide area now this is the statement that states that hey did we break cap theorem because spanner claims to be both consistent and highly available and while operating over globally distributed database so has it actually broken the cap theorem right the key thing is it is not so true why because here it says that the short answer is no obviously technique but yes in effect and its user can and do assume ca so theoretically no but in practice you can say it has quote unquote broken cap theorem which is where how because obviously you cannot break the theoretical limits you can always come up with a proof you can always come up with a condition where uh, c and a both get like in case of a network partition you would have to choose between c and a so you have typically not got on all three but however no system provides 100% availability so the pragmatic question here is whether or not spanner delivers availability that is so high that most users don't worry about the outages so the framework the cap framework has made it very easy for database designers especially distributed system designers to think it in a certain way right so given that no system can provide 100% availability but can your system give you very high availability that your users don't care about outages 100% is impossible to achieve right so but the availability is so high that your users are not worrying about it okay for example given that there are many sources of outages for an application if spanner is an insignificant contributor to its downtime then users correct or then the users are correct to not worry about it, right that's how they are going for right in practice no, that's fine we'll go inside spanner like it's okay there are several factors but most important one is that spanner runs on google's private network that's where specialized hardware comes in that spanner is running on google's private network unlike most wide area networks and especially the public internet google controls the entire network and thus can ensure redundancy of hardware and paths the actual physical hardware they are talking about and can also control upgrades and operations in general so they what they are stating here is that we would make our hardware so specialized we would make our hardware so good that it is almost near impossible to have now see the the kind of uh, trade offs they have chose not be a very uh, a system would not be very highly available they have lowered the bar but they say we would still because 100% availability is not possible but they've lowered the bar slightly they say that if we would make our hardware such that it is very highly available and would make our hardware such that your network the paths that it would cover it's very hard for it to fail you are effectively saying that my system cannot ever have a partition my system almost cannot ever have availability issues then you can easily ensure consistency and right? that's what they are playing with right that's what i'm saying it's very it's all about proprietary hardware right fibers will still be cut equipments will still fail but the overall system remains quite robust so they are going you know, they say that failures would happen but what if we have fallbacks for everything on the hardware level right helping it uh, become better right which is where the quote and quote breaking of cap theorem comes in so how do they do that it also took years of operational improvements to get to this point for much of the last decade google had improved its redundancy fault containment above and all its processes for evolution we found that network contributed less than 10% of spanner's already rare outages 
here's the statement that they made that network partitioning will be there but on their very proprietary hardware it's less than 10% of all the outages it's not that 10% time it is down right of all the outages that they have seen and this is 2017 a lot of things have changed from then right? but the key thing here is that it has contributed less than 10% or like the uh, the outages the reason for outages being network right so they're making their hardware so 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 good that you would almost never have availability pain points obviously like some availability would be gone and but you would almost never have some partitioning so it's more about varying the degree of availability and partitioning so they lower this a bit and then they increase consistency that's how they are almost breaking the cap here building systems that can manage data that spans the globe provides data consistency and are also highly available is possible it's just really hard when I, when they say it's possible it's all about it's all about uh what do we say uh making their hardware more reliable it's all about it's all about making their hardware more reliable right and that's what we see throughout this blog post that they improved their availability through very high rate. They improved their partitioning. They improved their hardware so much that network partition would never happen. And that's how they're trying to quote unquote break the cap here. I'm using it for very long, like far too many instances, right? The beauty of the cloud is that someone else can build that for you and you can focus on innovation core to a service and application. And obviously there's a white paper attached to it which obviously we want to go through but if you are interested do go through something that i read for like long time back but would recommend you to go through uh, spanner's white paper it's not really difficult to read uh, and to be honest if you are interested in databases and distributed data stores uh, uh, the key thing over here is that whenever if you read two or three papers or two or three systems other systems you can automatically derive because the core idea remains the same but just one thing I want to talk about this next steps. Here, it covers spanner consistency, like the white paper covers spanner consistency availability in depth, including new data. It also looks into the role played by Google's true time, which provides globally synchronized log. The thing that we started with, that it gives you real time timestamp to every datum. This is that Google's true time, right? So the paper actually covers that. Read about it uh, in case you are interested. Like, the magic is in the hardware. So the way they are challenging uh, the cap theorem, but obviously who is challenging the cap theorem? The person who 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 formalized it, Eric Brewer, right? VP in front Google fellow, like who can challenge him? So he knows it in and out. So what he is like through this blog post, it is very evident what he is trying to do over here, right? Ensure that your hardware is so good, is so available and so fault tolerant over uh, to the network outages that you would automatically get, almost automatically get all three, not 100%, but something that your end users would not be able to perceive. So they give you those guarantees almost 100%, like almost like no one can change 100% of it. Right? So yeah, this is where, and this all came from um, uh, one topic that someone asked me to talk about, that there are a lot of gimmick videos and which is I thought like, hey, let's dive deep into this to understand, you know, cap theorem and how systems are able to get what it gets. Right? Few things. Here also we see, now I'm back to Wikipedia page. Uh, the database systems designed with traditional asset guarantees in mind, such as RDVMS, choose consistency or availability. How? Because it's just one data node. If it goes down, you are giving up availability. But what you get? You get high consistency. Where a system designed around base philosophy, common in NoSQL movement, for example, choose availability or consistency. That they said that hey, we would give you, and it's a very blanket statement, does not hold true much, but you see the trade-offs that the databases are taking, or any distributed system for that matter is taking. Right? And then there are a few there are a few things that they are mentioned, but read this line. <clears throat> in 2012, Brewer clarified some of his positions including why the often used two out of three concept can be somewhat misleading because system designers only need to sacrifice consistency or availability in presence of partitions. We all 
have been taught that cap theorem means you can pick any two out of three. So either consistency availability or consistency in partitioning or availability in partitioning. Right? But that's not true. That's not what it stands for. It stands for that in case of a network partition, you have to choose between consistency and availability. This entire discussion gave you that notion of what cap theorem actually is and what it isn't. So these two uh, is something that I found really helpful when I was first trying to understand cap theorem. These two documents just uh, covers everything that what exactly is cap, how it affects and how when someone says that we are breaking it, it, it does not mean they're breaking it. It's more about what they are trading off. They're making their hardware better and better to reduce the chances of it going down and this happening. Right? Then what next? And I think yeah, that's it. Rest, feel free to read all these resources. There are a bunch of them. Right? Okay. We'll go through some questions. Oh, by the way, thanks, people. Thanks, Anil. It wasn't required, but thanks means a ton. Right. Okay. I'll take a few questions. Feel free to drop in the chat. Apologies, I could not uh, spend a lot of time in chat. But uh, now let's take some questions in case there are any. Okay. Abhi posted. Uh, are we referring to each partition being stored in a different region? Uh, each partition is part of data or is it whole? Okay. So here, that's the thing. A lot of people assume over here that you don't have to be cross region. Right? Understand where your data resides. It's the data is effectively partitioned it can very well be present on a single local data center that you have. You don't really have, you don't really need it to be distributed across region. Obviously, there are databases like CockroachDB does that. CockroachDB gives you, gives you globally consistent view of data. Spanner does that, right? But again, it's built on proprietary hardware in a lot of cases. Not in case of CockroachDB, but definitely in case of Spanner, right? So it is not something that one should assume that your data is present across regions it is that's why they've used like quote unquote wide area now wide the definition of wide could be anything if you are underlying hardware the network cables that connect machines if they are very old and very uh, dusty or rusty then even your local data center can become a wide area network why because there is a chance of it chopping down and network package dropping and whatnot right that's what it boils down to and this is DBMS, Ankur, what is the subject? I'm diploma student. I'm talking about uh, distributed systems. I was all learning. Santara <laughs> Kang, referring to each partition. I don't see questions. In case there are any questions, feel free to drop uh, drop them in the chat. I'll more than happy to cover them. Uh, comparing the stats. One sheet's a genre of database, new SQL. DDB handles a lot of public load and Amazon Prime Day. Same as public AWS, unlike Google Spanner. Uh, I don't think Spanner is almost 20x. No, I'm not saying it is 20x better than DB and than DDB. I'm saying it handled more traffic, Upendra. I'm just stating it's part of a blog that is published where it states that it has handled that much of traffic. I'm not in any way saying it is better or worse. Each has its own class, right? Like uh, uh, Spanner deals with a different kind of load while uh, ddb deals with a different kind of load spanner offers different kind of operations ddb offers different kind you very rightly pointed out it is apples to orange comparison 100 percent true but what happened one company stated facts about another other company stated fact about another it's corporate war we are engineers we would we should just appreciate the scale that they're able to handle and i'm just stating what uh google very recently published in the blog that they handled more than 20x of traffic than what DDB claimed to have handled. That's it. I'm not saying in any way it is better or worse or whatnot. It just handled more traffic. Right? And Ripple might token support. I have following concerns about partition. It is, uh, it is not time bound. How does an offline first distributed systems work if outages are weeks long? Is it for single master cloud only system? So Vipul, like you obviously have uh, worked on uh, offline first databases, like you know it really well. So here, 
when we talk about partitioning it is a more about the way your network is partitioned obviously you would not want a partition to last for a very long time but if your data is present or if your data let me just get your question correctly how does an offline first distributed system work if outages are weak load okay so in that case uh okay offline first distributed systems which means you have a lot of distributed small databases like offline databases which means your light writes can happen locally which means if your outages last for a very long time which means that there is no in this case there would be no central authority to connect to that who would uh, who would affect the state which means there would be a lot of conflict issues so which means there has to be a way to do conflict resolutions so it would all fall under how do you resolve conflict when updates happen at different places and how do you converge them to the same state so which is where crdt where i did a podcast with you crdts would come in otherwise if it is application specific then if it is an offline first system and if it is application specific then you can define your your own conflict resolution strategy over there or if a database offers a specific kind of data access pattern in that case uh, your database can take care of conflict resolution on your behalf depending on how they would want to do it so crdt is obviously you know it but for others crdt is, is something that you can explore uh, conflict free replicated data types is what can help you achieve this otherwise build your own or build your own as in uh, depending on the data pattern and the query pattern you can figure out uh, what your conf- uh, what your conflict resolution strategy should be and that's how you would go about it by the way thanks people for that question then what else i don't see other questions done latest any other question oh there are a bunch of messages nice assumption of cap theorem it can't be universal general question crdt should converge yeah rohan correctly pointed out crdt should converge there uh, jayesh ask if networks are partitioned for example write request not reached if the write request isn't processed how come it is not consistent since write is not even processed yes exactly right happened in case of network partitioning right happened to one part imagine it's a imagine you have a uh, every data is present on five like you have a distributed data store a data is present in five shards right and when your write happens you write it on five let's say there are total 50 shards right now what would happen is let's say you want your write to succeed so when you are writing the writes go to five shards right synchronously but it does not wait for all five it waits for the majority the majority is 3 right so assume that there is a network partitioning such that two nodes are part of partition a three nodes are part of partition b the right went to partition b right and when the right happened it issued to all of them it waited for three to respond three responded so it says that right is successful right but when your read goes to this other partition it would see the old copy because the right never happened on these shards there was no because of network partitioning your data would could not converge right the state could not be replicated that's why the right was successful it got the majority because it happened on the first on the second half of it while the first half was unaware about the rights that's where your network partitioning affects it you should have two databases offline can handle sql at crdts uh, in ap do we ensure at least eventual consistency or no consistency uh, in ap do we ensure we in ap if you are giving up on consistency which means see no system is completely available so you either take complete outage to protect your consistency otherwise you take partial outage and return old results that's what it boils down so it depends on what guarantees your database or your data store would want to provide over there and you can choose either uh does spanner high consistency mean strong or eventual consistency it means strong consistency and uh, as application dev do i need to consider code for partitioning failure with spanner or treat it will committed and consistent it so as a developer you don't have to worry about network partitioning that's what spanner document states it says is you just bluntly rely on us for all three right so as a developer or as a as someone who is using spanner don't worry about anything just use it uh, won't latency take a hit when ca 
won't it take availability if I care for latency? How does Spanner tackle this issue? That's exactly what would happen, right? So Abhilash asked, uh, won't latency take a hit when CA, right? <coughs> Obviously, latencies will take a hit, right? And you can't do much with it, right? And that's where there's hype, like, and in this case, because it's a distributed data store, you're bound to have a little higher network. Obviously, it's not a single machine where you know, reads and writes happen locally and it's lightning fast, right? You're bound to do, because you're doing a lot of distributed transactions, right? Latency is going to be there, but it won't, won't be much. In case of partitioning, the other side is not even aware. So they would not even know. So if there is a majority of node for a particular data shard, it is sub, it suffices from that then other part is not even getting there. So it's not that it would, like if you're pointing out that it would try to reach to the other node, but it is unable to do it and timeout would happen, then it's a timeout and the configuration of your SLA. There is nothing about it, right? Because it's the SLA that you would want to have. Let's say Spanner gives you an SLA of, let's say, 5 milliseconds. Hypothetically, it gives you SLA of 5 milliseconds. So which means it would try to write, write it to the available IP addresses of the shards where it needs to write. Three of them are part of the same network the writes happen there successfully when it is across the network it would issue the write but the write would never happen why because the packet cannot reach there right so after the timeout it would break so here it's not that you are perpetually waiting for the write to complete on that other partition on that other network partition right to maintain your sla you would be timing out your write and that's how you would build. So typically in every distributed system, whenever you're making a network call, you would typically assign some timeout to that. Oh yeah, thanks people. Uh, yeah, Martin Kleppman's blog on Cap Theorem is great. I, I was planning to cover, but it look, it was so overwhelming for me to cover. Right? But, uh, superb. Chalo, superb. Thanks folks. Thanks folks for tuning in. Means are done. Uh, you folks. Uh, by the way, thanks for all the great questions. Uh, by the way, this is all what I wanted to cover. Feel free to shoot your questions in the uh, uh, in the comment section. Uh, sorry, in the description section, I've, link, I've attached the form. Submit a topic that you want me to cover. It's easy that I cover what you folks need. This came out from that itself. So do uh, submit what you want me to cover. More than happy to go through it. More than happy to do deep dives like this. And uh, talk about some tough topics from the first principles. So, thanks folks for tuning in. See you folks next Sunday. Means are done. Uh, have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.